Hey guys, welcome to Geo and Mozu. In today's video, we are looking at the impact of the Kalahari high or a Kalahari anticyclone on South Africa's weather. Firstly, we need to talk about the Kalahari high. We need to understand exactly what is the Kalahari, Kalahari high or a Kalahari anti cyclone. Right? Remember the Kalahari high. A high pressure can also be called an anticyclone, right? We call it Kalahari high because it's a high pressure cell. Anticyclone because of the regulation of a high pressure, right? So a Kalahari high can, be, can also be called an anticyclone, Kalahari anticyclone. Kalahari high because it's a high pressure system or high pressure cell. Uh, Kalahari anticyclone because, because the air circulation is anti clockwise right so what you must know about a Kalahari high or a high pressure in general is that it is associated with sinking or subsiding a right it is associated with sinking subsiding or descending a right because remember pressure refers to force exerted on a surface right so it's a high pressure because there's more force of more pressure being exerted on this surface, right? The air is sinking, causing more force of pressure on the surface, right? So, calorie high uh, is associated with sinking, subsiding, or descending air, right? Or descending air, right? It is dominant. It is dominant in winter. Calorie high is dominant in winter it is dominant in winter there is more sinking more subsidence or more descending air in winter because in winter we have low temperatures which means there's cold air and we know that our cold air is heavy and dense and therefore it sinks and therefore it sinks so our kalahari high is dominant in winter because we have cold air which sinks which sinks a high pressure cell is associated with sinking a sinking subsiding or descending right when this calorie high is dominant in winter in winter and on your synoptic weather map you will see it being dominant in winter there will be an edge over the interior this is our calorie high or our calorie anticyclone dominant in winter the top view of south africa right this is a top view of south africa if i were to draw a cross section of south africa this is how it would look this is how it would look this is a cross section of south africa this is the plateau and this is my escarpment this is my escarpment right this is that this represents the trackensberg mountain right uh, so the Kalahari high is dominant in winter. In winter, the Kalahari high will be dom dominant over the plateau or over the interior, right? This is a cross section of South Africa and this is a top view, right? This is a top view of South Africa and this is the cross section. This is the Kalahari high. This is the same thing. This is the Kalahari high, right? So I'm going to explain how the Kalahari high affects the climate in South Africa using a cross section. Using what? A cross section. Okay, uh, now one more time. Here's the cross section of South Africa. Here's my plateau. And this is my escarpment. And this is my escarpment, right? Now on this side, we have the Indian Ocean. This is the Indian ocean on the east of south africa this is my plateau in winter i said the kalahari high is dominant right it is dominant so the kalahari high since it is dominant i told you guys a high pressure is associated with cold air which sinks here's the cold air which is sinking it is sinking now the indian ocean on the other hand carries a lot of moisture it carries a lot of what moisture so red moist air from the indian ocean will rise it does what it rises but we know that as air rises it is going to cool as air rises it cools as the air rises it cools but when air sinks it warms up adiabatically right so this sinking air as it goes down it warms up
right but this moist air from the ocean as it rises it cools as it rises it cools this is very important right when there's a high pressure the air sinks but when air sinks it warms up adiabatically right as it goes down it warms up adiabatically but when as air rises it cools right so when it sinks it warms up but when it rises it cools and it's going to form a layer in the atmosphere it is going to form a layer now inside this layer uh, we have cool air at the bottom of this layer at the top we have warm air we have cool air at the bottom warm air at the top this means that in this particular area in this particular layer let me call it a layer in this particular layer the temperatures are lower at the bottom of this layer but as you go higher and it is warm it means the temperatures are becoming higher as i go up inside this layer remember this air from the ocean cools as it rises therefore we have cool here cool air at the bottom and then the air which sinks warms up as it sinks so, so at the top we have warm air right so inside this layer at the bottom we have lower temperatures because we have cool air at the top we have high temperatures because we have warm air so inside this layer temperature is increasing with altitude right it is lower and then it rises becomes higher as you go up inside this layer inside this layer so inside this layer temperature is increasing with altitude and we know that normally normally temperature decreases with altitude but inside this layer temperature is increasing with altitude and this is known as the inversion layer this layer is known as the inversion layer this is the inversion layer this is the layer in the atmosphere where temperature increases with altitude temperature increases with altitude in the inversion layer or you can say it increases with height right one more time moist air from the ocean rises but when it rises as it rises it cools but uh, the air which is descending or sinking warms up as it goes down it warms up adiabatically right so inside this layer the air at the bottom will be cool because remember the air from the ocean cools as it rises right and the air at the top will be warm because the air which sinks warms up adiabatically as it goes down right so inside this layer we're going to have cool air at the bottom and, at, and then above it we have warm air right we have warm air which means that at the bottom of this layer we have low temperatures because we have cool air and at the top we have high temperatures right so inside this layer as you go higher temperature increases temperature increases with height or altitude and this is our inversion layer a layer in the atmosphere where temperature increases with altitude now the position of this inversion layer varies depending on the season right now let me do those two seasons summer and winter so you can see the position of the inversion layer in both these seasons and how it affects the climate of south africa now here i have my two seasons winter and summer winter and summer now remember what i said about winter i said in winter the kalahari high or the kalahari anticyclone is dominant it is dominant so we have more sinking air or more subsiding air which pushes our inversion layer below the escarpment below the escarpment right in winter the kalahari high is dominant it is dominant it's more powerful than because we have cold temperatures the cold air and cold air sinks our cold air sinks pushing our inversion layer our inversion layer below the escarpment now this prevents the moist air from the ocean the moist air from the ocean from reaching the interior right hence there's less rainfall in winter number one 
in winter the kalahari high the kalahari anticyclone is dominant it is dominant here i have it here over the interior right above the plateau so since a high pressure is associated with sinking air it pushes our inversion layer to below the escarpment right so our moist air from the indian ocean cannot reach the interior we need this moist air to reach the interior we need this moist air we need that moist air let me throw it in blue we need this moist air from the indian ocean the moist air from the indian ocean to reach the interior so it can rise cool and condense to form clouds and more rainfall but since our invasion layer is below the escarpment this moist air cannot reach the interior so there is no there is less rainfall in winter less rainfall in winter this warm air cannot go through the, the invasion layer it cannot penetrate it right so the position of this invasion layer is the reason why in winter there is less rainfall right because the moist air from the ocean is trapped it is below the invasion layer because the kalahari high is dominant it is sinking it is forcing it down right but then in summer in summer the kalahari high is weak the kalahari high is weak in summer dominant in winter but it is weak in summer there is less subsidence there remember in summer we have a low pressure over the land right there is more uh, rising air there is more rising air so our kalahari high is weak in summer so the moist air from the indian ocean is able to go over into the interior because the level because the level of the inversion layer the level of the inversion layer is my inversion layer my inversion layer the level of the inversion layer is now above the escarpment right so the moisture from the indian ocean gets into the interior it rises cools and condenses to form cloud and more rainfall over the interior in summer because the kalahari high is weak in summer but in winter it is dominant and it pushes the invasion layer below the escarpment in winter and then the moisture from the ocean is not able to reach the interior as there is less rainfall but then in summer the kalahari high is very weak it is weak which means that our invasion layer is no longer being pushed down, right? It is above the escarpment. It is above the escarpment, allowing our moist air from the ocean to reach the interior, rise, cool, and condense to form clouds and therefore more rainfall over the interior in summer, right? So in summer, we have more rainfall because the invasion layer is above the escarpment. But in winter, less rainfall, because the invasion layer is below the escarpment right so this is all caused by the kalahari high kalahari high the level of the invasion layer is influenced by this kalahari high where it is dominant it pushes it down to below the escarpment preventing the moist air from reaching the interior but in summer it is weak right so that the invasion layer is above it is no longer being pushed down right which allows the moist air from the Indian Ocean to reach the interior to form clouds and bring about rainfall, right? In summer. So this is why we're having our seasonal rainfall in South Africa, right? Because of such anticyclones, right? We have other, we have two other ones. We have the South Indian anticyclone and the South Atlantic anticyclone. They also influence or impact the weather or the climate of South Africa. I'm